Well, boys, they're finally here. The OG Hatch t-shirts. Thank you to everyone who pre-ordered one of these bad units. Only the real OGs will uh, see the subtle details here. We even got the Jack in the Box antenna topper. That's for some pre-100,000 subscriber guys out there that know what that's about back in the Mexico days. But finally got a shirt for the hatch. She's burning all four tires. As you guys know, we chained it up to a whole bunch of things and did some four-wheel drive burnouts with the Civic. But yeah, super pumped on how these came out. And these are getting sent out to everyone who pre-ordered them right now, along with some of the MR2 Carnage. Um, so if you didn't get your pre-order in, unfortunately, you missed your chance to get one for right now. Um, whatever we have left over, we will be bringing out to Bristol, because if you guys haven't heard, I'm gonna be racing in the Freedom 500, and this year it is at Bristol Motor Speedway. And it's not the 500. It's the it? Bristol 1000. It's the Bristol 1000. I messed <laughs> it up, but we're racing in the Bristol 1000 at Bristol Motor Speedway. That is September 3rd to the 4th, which is uh, Saturday and Sunday. We will have some more of these out there along with a whole bunch of other merch. We'll be out there hanging out, and we're gonna try to get old Susie the sidekick here up and going for Bristol, and our plan is to hopefully do a fat burnout out there, but we still have a lot of work to do. We have just over a week, and currently the engine is just sitting in there. We still have to- <laughs> Looking a little bare. <laughs> it's looking exactly like how it did when we left it like three weeks ago. So <laughs> transmission still needs to be built, still doesn't have a torque converter in it, still needs a manifold made. It still needs everything, but Buddy Mike's coming down to help us out. Hopefully we can get her knocked out and bring the sidekick down to Bristol to do a burnout in the burnout contest. And then obviously we'll be racing in the Bristol 1000. So hope to see you guys out there. And uh, today's video is actually about the LS in the 240. We'll get to the sidekick in the next coming video. Sorry, we've been a little behind here, but we uh, are gonna try to get the LS together for the 240 a day. And then we'll be making progress on this up until the event. So hope to see you guys out there. And uh, if you guys missed your chance to get a hat shirt, it'll probably be available sometime later on. But y'all should have pre-ordered and you guys might get chunks of the MR2 in your order. So thank you guys. As you guys saw, the Junkyard LS we picked up for the 240 was not in the best condition. We got these first couple rod caps pulled off here and we found out that the crankshaft was pretty scored. We figured our best case scenario is just to find another crankshaft to replace the one that's in there so we don't have to take this apart and give it to a machine shop and wait on them, get oversized bearings, that whole deal. So I actually saw the comments on the last video and shout out to Caleb because I had no idea that you could actually just get a refurbished crankshaft for an LS at your local auto parts store. So this one I actually got from O'Reilly's, but AutoZone, all of them seem to uh, carry these. And for a little over $300, you get a freshly remanufactured crankshaft with the bearings you need to uh, go along with it. So that made it very easy. So once again, thank you, Caleb. I did see the comment and that's what we did. I went there and then the next day we got our new crankshaft ready to go. So with that being said, that was the main thing holding us back. We can go ahead and get this thing torn apart. We got fresh rings to regap the pistons. We're gonna open them up a little bit in case we ever turbo this thing later on and just uh, go through it, refresh it, fresh bearings, new rings, rebuild this thing as is and go from there. And this will be our uh, new heart for the 240 here. So let's go ahead and tear it down and go from there. All right guys, so we got the bottom end all torn apart here and now we are installing some new cam bearings and yep. luckily Whit has the, the tool for the job here. We're doing the cardinal sin. Most guys just don't look at the cam bearings and they're fine, but the second you look at them, they're bad, so. How did ours look? I mean, they didn't look we terrible, looked. right? So, but we looked and they're bad now. We looked and they're bad now. So don't look at your cam bearings, apparently, if you're building an LS, but we took a look at them, so now we gotta change them. And uh, Wyatt has this tool right here to do that. We went ahead and hammered out all of the old ones and we already went ahead and got two new ones installed. We were just making sure the process was going smooth before we picked up the camera. I'm learning a lot here, never done this before, but you just take your cam bearing right here. You gotta line up this hole with the uh, orifice down inside of there. So we just use a Sharpie to make a line there and we just make sure it's lined up. And then this guy slides over this. There is a knob right there. You tighten while you hold this nut and then this, uh, rubber part right here opens up and clamps to the bearing nice and tight 
And then this uh, back metal piece right here allows it to push it into place. Just smack yeah. it back there with a hammer. Pretty simple setup. So it's just, uh, doesn't really take any time to change these. So might as well do them. Like I said, ours were a little rough, so. Yep, just, getting uh, them little, done. A little extra longevity out of it maybe. Not that it's gonna live with what we do with it, but peace of mind, I guess. Yeah, figure we might as well just give her a good refresh. And I guess it does matter where the bearings go. They are numbered, so each one has a uh, serial number on it and it has to go in between the certain cylinders. So making sure we got everything in place here, ready to go. Got three more to do. And then we will have our new Karen bearings installed. Is that and then you can check your orifice just by shining a light in it. Yep, there are two holes on each bearing, so don't mind that one right there. Yep, the other orifice is on the inside right here. Looks like you gotta go forward a little bit more. You can look down in there and see right where that light shines through, and it can tell you if you're centered in your journal or not. The old dingleberry honer out, boys. That was a whole power build right here, old son. Yes, sir. Getting our cylinders all bored out real quick. We have our new rings over here. So once we're done getting all these guys honed out, we'll clean the uh, surfaces off. We'll get our rings in there and uh, get to gapping. Yes. Loose for boost, possibly one day. <laughs> but for right now, all motor will do. You know what yeah. you're doing with that? Got a few of them. <laughs> <laughs> this old LS is definitely getting the junkyard treatment right here. Let me show you how she's done. This is how you build 1,000 horsepower engine. Built Duramax motor, same way. We don't need no ring filers where we come from. Yes, That'll do. That'll do. Slap that guy back in there. Square it up. Thing looks El Presidente to me. Let's see here. Man, perfect. Good to go. Slide that guy out. Ready to go. All right, guys, we are ready for final assembly of the bottom end here. We just got our new main bearings in. The block is cleaned off. We got all of the rings gapped over here. Went ahead and pulled off all of the piston rings off these old nasty pistons and rods over here. My hands were disgusting after that, but we just got to get the new rings onto the pistons, get our new crankshaft in there, start stuffing it all in. We're going to have ourselves a good old junkyard LS for the 240. Wyatt just got all of the caps torqued down and she still spins. That is a good sign, boys. She's not locked up. <laughs> She's mint, bud. I think we're doing it right. So it spins pretty good. All of our bearings are in there, lubed up, ready to go. We are reusing a lot of the bolts. You know, we were supposed to probably get some new bolts since these are torqued to yield, but we're working with what we got here, boys. That's 
everybody. This is a junkyard El Presidente rebuild, right? She's going to go or she's going to blow, guys. Great. <laughs> and I think she's going to go for a while. I ain't too worried about it. Yeah. Maybe once we give her some boost, then it might get questionable. But, you know, for right now, she's going to ride. Just got all of the rings onto the pistons, got the bearings into the rods. And now we are ready to put all of these guys back into the block. Get those holes lubed up real nice. Yep. We got eight of them now, not the typical four. So she needs twice as much attention, twice as much lube. Twice as wet, buddy. It's a little sketch. Very sketch. Nothing to see here, folks. <laughs> Freaking LS things. Oh, we're good. Coming. You going? Yep. Oh, that is so tight. Yep. Yeah, we definitely probably should have put this on the crank before we <coughs> assembled the other engine. <clears throat> the nice thing with the crank is you can just hammer on tight with the crank bolt. Yep. It'll be all right. Give her some uggas. Yep. You only strip it out once, I'll tell you that. There it is. Yes, em. Always lube your shaft, boys, before insertion. Pause the camera. <laughs> We're on the wrong website here. <laughs> <laughs> this is real awkward now. That is a snug fit. Oh, there she goes. Probably a little First burr one. on that cam bearing. I ain't gonna lie to you, but it's fine. We've done a couple questionable things off camera <laughs> that we're not gonna show you guys, but it'll ride. It's okay. <laughs> it will self-clearance, as they say. Well, boys, our uh, bottom end for the LS is all together. She rotates over fine. Buddy, do you even know what to do? Sign? Do you even know what you're looking at here with eight pistons moving up and down? This is twice as many cylinders as I'm used to. You know, I'll be honest here why I did a lot of the work behind the scenes. Use my uh, LS expert because I only know Honda K-Series. But, you know, I helped here and there. I think, I think <laughs> she'll run okay. You did decent. And when it blows up, I'm blaming you. Whatever you did, <laughs> yep. it was your fault. That's fine with me. But, uh, yeah, everything looks good. You know, we put our hands on there. The pistons have a nice good suck on them. So we know we're making... <laughs> Compression. Good Compor suck, squeeze, bang, blow. Yeah, that's all you need. Freaking compression, fuel, and spark, and I think it should run on all eight. But uh, unfortunately, we have to stop here. We were gonna go ahead and get the heads on, but we realized we don't have head studs. We threw the old ones away, and we have to wait on new ones to come in, which will be here tomorrow. But we wanna get this video out, and we have a lot of work to do on the sidekick for Bristol. So the 240 and the LS is gonna have to be put on hold for a little bit until we get all that in, but Essentially, the uh, long block is all put together here. We short block. Do the, the short block. Yep. You have the short block, no heads. We just got to do the freaking push rods, lifters, get the heads on there, and uh, man, it'll be good to go. I'm saying a whole bunch of words I've never said before. So <laughs> I'm not talking about the VTEC solenoid or whatever else is going on with the Honda motor, but dual overhead cams. Yeah. We don't what got two hell? cams to put on there. Actually, side point this is basically a case here. It's got a freaking timing chain on it. I mean, yeah, it's pretty much was, the same. 
That was the easiest thing I've ever seen to time. It's very simple. <laughs> Line up the dots and put one the little chain, chain on. and you're good to go. But uh, yeah, so once we get the head studs in, we'll be able to get it all the way put back together. Transmission's down there, ready to go as well. So once this engine is completely assembled, we'll bolt up the transmission. We already have our mounts and everything for the 240, so the 240's been sitting for too long. And hopefully after we get back from Bristol, we'll be able to stuff all of this in there and get that thing up and going and hear some V8 noises for one of the first times on this channel. Pretty excited about that, but learned a lot working on this LS. And uh, they are very simple, just twice as many cylinders. But anyways, we're gonna wrap it up there. Like I said, we got a lot of work to do on the sidekick. We're gonna try to have that done for Bristol. Hope to see you guys out there. And I think that's all I have to say for today's video. Grab some merch, whole shebang. That's all. See you <laughs> later, boys. Adios.